Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Arya Rostro. I'm a senior principal with Alexa Speech Org. I'm going to be talking uh, and walk us through some of the research activities that we are doing under uh, 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 Alexa ESR Org. So, like uh, she already covered, when a user talks with a device, we try to detect a wake word on device, and then we start streaming the audio to cloud. And in cloud, we do a bunch of classification tasks using the audio. Namely, we try to do a speech recognition. We have to also infer when the user is finishing their, the, the, the query. Besides that, we do a speaker recognition, whisper classification, and language identification that are all form of uh, using, uh, using the audio that is streamed to cloud. For ASR specifically, it is paramount for us to build a system that is robust to different uh, acoustic scenarios and acoustic contexts different devices, and it's also able, capable of covering different dialogues and accents. To achieve this, we build, we, we latch onto a large data schema, both in form of supervised data and also unsupervised and semi-supervised training. Namely, we build, uh, we use a pool of labeled data across different locales uh, of variants of English, for example, ENUS, ENGB, and IN, and EN Australian. We use the same pooling of the data when dealing with our unlabeled and unsupervised data. We mix uh, of about more than 1 million hours of unsupervised data into our supervised pool of supervised data. And we, we pre-train the models using uh, this uh, pool data and then fine-tune the models uh, to, to be locale specific. We also have to be Besides, you know, cross-lingual transfer learning, we have to also be cognizant about robustness to different noise and room responses. Our, our story there is to use data augmentation scenario, uh, techniques to, to use uh, noise and reverberation simulation to, to augment our data. Um, so conventional, the ASR systems, you know, comprise of acoustic model and a language model. So, in, in the previous slides, we, we covered what is our what is our recipe, what is our research in, in building an, an acoustic model which is robust to different dialogues and different acoustic scenarios. We also at the same time have to be able to uh, build a system that has a very strong and robust language model, one that is capable of understanding, uh, you know, uh, uh, users' queries in, in different contexts and scenarios. Basically, uh, the, the, the solution to this problem for us is we, we essentially latch onto a, 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 a neural language model technology using large scale uh, uh, la uh, neural language models that are utilized in a second, in, in, in a two, pa two pass rescoring system. Namely, we process audio using a first pass large engram language models. Then the output of the first pass is re-scored in the form of lattice or NBAS using a stronger neural language model. Besides, we make sure that this rescoring, the rescoring uh, neural language models are again trained on a huge amount of semi-supervised and unsupervised data. Basically, we use roughly about 1 billion uh, semi-supervised data from our production machine transcript data to pretend our neural language models. And then we further fine tune those on, 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 uh, on, the, on the labeled data. And then that's how we build a, a strong language, uh, neural language model. Um, but we also want to make sure that our language models are domain ever. So if you look at a typical uh, you know, usage for, for, for Alexa and voice assistants, different users have different type of usage. Users can be can tracking devices to, to carry like shopping-like uh, queries, uh, asking about like uh, navigation queries or playing music or, or many, more, many more domains. So it's very challenging to build a language model which is, uh, has a coverage over all these domains yet very accurate in representing all single domains. So what we have come up with is that uh, build a uh, notion of domain ever neural language models in, in our second pass re scores, basically using an output of a first pass and looking into the NBES and lattices, we infer what the underlying domain should be. And using that information, we dispatch our neural second pass language model scoring to a, to a, to a, to a relevant 
language model. As it can be seen here in the in this graph, you, using this technique, we 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 can uh, we can build way more precise language models that ultimately result in in significant word rate improvements for specific domains, um, and more so on, on the slot level. Um, the other aspect of context is to in, to to ingest context in the form of multi-turn interactions. So conventionally, multi-turn interactions are, are are processed as a standalone interactions. But intuitively, one can argue that there is a huge amount of information and persistency in in in, in context when a customer starts a multi-turn interaction with their voice assistance devices. So for example, here, an example query is, uh, Alexa, call Jeff. And you probably, a customer has uh, both Jeff Business and Jeff Wilkin in their contact list. So Alexa will start a multi-turn interaction in the form of elicitation to, to understand user means Jeff Bezos or Jeff Wilkie. So the TTS response will be, do you want to call Jeff Bezos or Jeff Wilkie? And now at this point, it's, it, it, it's, it's apparent that we already know that we are just giving the customer two options. So it is, it is a really good idea to buy us the language model for processing the next coming query from the user to make sure that we are very robust in recognizing, you know, Jeff Bezos and Jeff Filkey because we already have that information. So basically using this observation, we have built techniques to use um, multi-turn LSTM neural language models that are capable of preserving the state and carry, carrying the context across the turns. And we have shown that we get drastic improvements when, when, when zooming into the uh, performance ASR on those sub -sub subsequent trends. As many of you know ever, uh, the, this is the new era of all neural speech recognition and many, 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 many people in the research community and, and uh, uh, are, are, are moving to uh, showing gains and popularity in using all neural speech recognition. Basically, all neural speech recognitions are in the form of end-to-end -end models. You have a single model that is capable of translating audio directly to words without the split and breakdown that we have in a conventional system between lexicon, language model, and acoustic models. The benefit of such system is that you, you can train all the parameters of the system jointly and in one shot using data. And due to this joint training and the fact that the whole network is serialized and represented as in one network, you have this, this lends itself to, to a strong candidate for low footprint settings because you can apply uniform compression and sparsification techniques to, to basically shrink down the footprint of the, the system and make it available to, to low footprint and constrained scenarios. So basically in September, uh, using techniques from all neural speech recognition, we have announced uh, new echo uh, devices that uh, include our custom uh, you know, hardware accelerator uh, called AZ1 Neural Edge Processor. And using that uh, hard hardware accelerator and the ground up uh, you know, all neural speech recognition that we have recently built, we are able to, to push and move the full ASR pipeline onto on, 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 on device and, uh, and process the audio locally and then just change the interface from device to, to cloud to be in the form of the text. We still get the text to cloud, but we accelerate the audio processing on device, and then we do the, the rest of the execution, Alexa pipeline execution in cloud. Um, so when you deal with on device and constrained, uh, you know, a resource constrained scenarios and devices, you have to be cognizant about how you represent and you quantize your models. You, you, I mean, in most scenarios, when dealing on, uh, with, with, uh, when, when you're going on device, you really cannot be 32-bit uh, representation. You have to come up with low-bit representation. So basically, uh, in a paper that we, we present uh, this year in interest speed, we have also come up with a new technique for quanti applying quantized aware training of our end-to-end -end, uh, uh, ASR systems. Um, and basically, the idea there is that as opposed to conventional quantized aware training mechanisms that are only 
really quantize ever at the forward pass and they are not quantized ever at the backward pass when you're you're training the system we have switched and come up with a new new framework wherein we use we, we imply quantized ever training in a form of a smooth regularization to come up to put a prior on over the weights and make the weights to be uh, you know uh, 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 way more quantized friendly and we have shown that this technique actually re worked very well in conjunction of or end to end speech recognition. We almost lose nothing going to all the way down to six bit representation. All right, the, the natural question after end to end and all neural ASR is that why to stop at ASR? Can we actually, you know, combine the techniques and learn, uh, use the techniques that are applied in an all neural speech recognition and essentially build uh, an all neural spoken language understanding, uh, you know, uh, 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 models. Conventionally, uh, when when building in a spoken language understanding, the system comprised of two separate and disjoint components. In the first in the first step, you try to translate audio using ASR into words to sequence of words, and then then comes in net, net downstream and the next step, which is uh, which grabs a sequence of words from the output of ASR and tries to uh, apply natural language understanding techniques to, to understand the intent domain and uh, the, uh, the slots that are, that are encoded in, 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 in the spoken query. Um, there are problems with, with this. I mean, there are, there are benefits to, to, to doing the SLU this way. You have the decoupling different teams can can work on you know optimizing different portions of the system but the problem the drawbacks are that like what we said in the end to an asr uh, you you are optimizing the full stack in a very using separate loss uh, and objective functions and in a very disjoint way this might not be the most optimal scenario in terms of accuracy basically usually the errors from asr do cascade down to NLU and NLU has not seen those errors and confusion, so that that can 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 result in errors cascading down to the whole execution pipeline. The other part of it is that really, when you think about it, we are not optimizing system to to be accurate for the parts that matter in an spoken query. So, an spoken query can compromise can comprise of you know many you know functional fu function words or or words that don't, don't really matter like hesitation in in changing the meaning of the semantic meaning of uh, of a query yet we are optimizing the asr to get everything right and then you destroy to get everything right but by putting things together and combining them into one one uh, you know end to end speech to semantic system we are able to to get the, ben the all of the benefits Mean, namely, we are able through through overhauling the interface between ASR and NLU to become all neural to be able to number one to apply a joint optimization for an overall goal of uh, building a highly optimized SLU system. Number two, because of that, because ASR now the system is jointly trained, uh, NLU is capable to handle and is learned and trained to handle the, the ambiguity and ASR errors that are cascaded to NLU. Number three is that by, by, by having access to NLU output and loss when building the system, we are able to also backpropagate the error signal from the semantic level to the ASR, meaning we are able to improve the ASR at the parts that, that, that matter. We actually show in the paper that we present in this speech that this results both improvements in the overall SLU performance, but also in the intrinsic, you know, in performance of ASR, meaning word error rate. And then once, like what we talk about in, into an ASR, once you did that, this system lends itself to, 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 to better compression and throughput, meaning accuracy per, per, per footprint, and making it more, even more attractive to, to deploy such system for, for constrained uh, you know, a resource environment such as on device. And why do we want to do that? Because beyond accelerating audio processing, we want to be able to also do the NLU and, 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 and perhaps speech labs and domain execution all locally to be able to even gain further, further latency improvements. 
So these are some of the some of the research uh, topics that we are uh, we, we are dealing with in the Alexa ASR org, and some of the techniques that we are presenting at interest page. So with that, I'm going to conclude and hand mic to to my colleague Andrew. Thank you.